Hello and welcome to our workshop on making decisions. In case you're new around here, you don't know me. My name is Katrina Horn and I'm a life coach. And as we say in coaching, uh, you are the product of your decisions. Meaning that, let's take an example straight off. If you decide to overeat a little bit every day, uh, after some time, well, you'll be fat, right? So you've made the choice of eating a little bit too much every day. So the result is that you may be overweight now. And there's nothing wrong with being overweight if you're enjoying it. Right? But some of us have made some choices or failed to make some choices or make some decisions. And that is why we find, us in a, find ourselves in a place where we, we haven't really chosen to be here. So that's why I think making decisions is so important. And my intention with this workshop is to allow you to become aware of how you make decisions so that you can not start criticizing yourself or, or scolding yourself or blaming yourself, but so that you can see how you could do it differently. When you do things differently, you get a different result. So I hope you're with me on, on this. You're of course more than welcome to participate via the chat. And I can see some of you already are, and that's always such fun. Hello, Elizabeth. Great to see you here. Right. Uh, so you can comment in the chat. I won't be always watching it because I'd like for the people who are on the replay who can't comment, to also get the maximum benefit in the minimum of time, if I can say it like that. Um, so I'm here to talk to you about um, the changes we can make if we allow ourselves to look at how we make decisions and possibly tweak it a little bit. So to start off with, I'm going to give you an example. Let's say you know somebody who says that she dreams about traveling to Paris, visiting Paris, and how that would just be like one of her biggest dreams in her life. And she keeps talking about it, but she never does it, right? And when you ask her, well, why don't you just book a flight and, and book a, a trip to, to Paris? She says, well, I'm not so sure about the plane. Like, uh, I've never taken a plane before. I don't know whether I can can. I don't know whether I won't be feeling afraid. So you talk to her about taking the plane. You tell her, well, actually, I've taken the plane several times. and I'm 100% sure that you can take the plane too. No problem there. Go ahead, book your flight. And then she says, oh, uh, well, actually, I'm not sure that I will know what to do when I get to Paris. I mean, I don't know how to take the metro and um, people don't speak English there and that would be really scary because I don't speak French and so somebody who comes up with an obstacle to all solutions right you would start thinking about her that she's not very serious in her dream right uh, and without judging her you might want to make her aware of it you might want to tell her well actually you know, you, you book a flight, you get on the flight, and when you get to Paris, there will be a solution, right? There will be a solution for transport. If you don't feel like taking the metro, well, you can take a taxi. You know, there's always a solution. You just don't know which one you want to choose right now. So I think if we are completely honest with ourselves, this analogy can be directly transferred to one of the situations we're living right now. And as I say, there's no need to get defensive about it because we're not accusing you of anything and you're not accusing yourself of anything either. We're just creating awareness, right? Because imagine your dream was to go to Paris and you're a little bit frightened of it. You would want to be able to make the decision to go despite your fears, right? I mean, that is what we want in life. So today is not going to be about surviving. It's going to be about thriving. As a life coach, I obviously believe that we are entitled to living our most magnificent life. And the best news is that we get to choose what that is. And it doesn't have to look anything like what anybody else wants. So if you're with me on that, I think I'll just dive straight into our content. 
feel free to comment uh, in the chat and I might notice it and then I might answer. So the advantages to being able to make swift decisions is that you build self-confidence and you actually get to do the things you set out to do. You achieve your goals or what I prefer saying, living your dream, right? You can make those powerful decisions so you actually get to see some results in life. You also create your life instead of reacting to it. So those are two different things in life coaching. Uh, we, we design our life. I sometimes say we actually choose exactly what it is we want to experience in life instead of just having circumstances bombard us. And of course, we don't control circumstances but what we do control is how we react to them, right? How we choose to see them, what we make them mean. That's where our power lies. So when I talk about power in this workshop, it's really to talk about responsibility because sometimes we don't like to take responsibility, right? Because it means that, or we can make it mean that we are wrong or we can, make it mean that we are to blame or something silly like that but we don't need to do that we can just take responsibility and not make it mean that we did something wrong and not make it mean that we are to blame that is actually possible and that is what coaching is all about so when you can make those decisions rapidly I like to say easily and elegantly effortlessly is that you get to have a lot of extra energy, all that energy you weren't spending on mind drama. Yesterday I bought this dress and you can't see it, but it's a fun dress. Um, I went into this shop. I only had a very, very limited amount of time, like 10 minutes. I looked around, I saw things I didn't want. I saw this dress and I thought, oh, I like the color. Took it out, looked at it, tried it on, thought, Yes, I like the price. It was 69 euros. I can do this. Let me go and buy it. So when I bought it, it was actually half price. So instead of 69 euros, it was 34 and a half, 34, 50 euros. So that was just an added benefit. But I'd already made my decision before, right? So that's how I like to operate. Go there, do that, get the maximum benefit, get to enjoy it. So Obviously, if you're not used to making swift decisions easy, easily and elegantly, you might need to practice a little bit and that is okay. So uh, you also get clearer thinking, right? You practice thinking clearly. Once you'll see how you make decisions, you'll know, you'll know what's happening. So you can go in there and tweak it should you want to. And then you also get to live out your values because you'll be making your decisions in alignment with your values. You would never want to make a decision that is not in alignment with your values. And I actually had a little bit of a dilemma on this because I was asked to testify uh, in a court uh, and I thought, oh, right, do I want to do that or not? And I thought, okay, um, this might damage me in the eyes of somebody, but my value is truth. Like one of my values is truth. And I think I need to always tell the truth, even when it might not take me to where I want to go, right? So uh, that feels so empowering when you can just focus on your values. What are my values? What is the right thing to do? Here in this case, I know what the right thing to do is. So I don't have to stay in a lot of mind drama about it. I took time to think about it, but my choice was so easy. I made the decision easily, swiftly, elegantly, and effortlessly. Not being able to make swift decisions means that you cultivate doubt, right? Oh, I don't know, we'll look into this. Staying in doubt takes up so much energy and where is the joy of the doubt? Where is the joy? Also, not making those decisions, keep piling up decisions that are not made. I call them decision loops. You have all these decisions open around you. You think, oh, I've got lots of choice. I've got all these decisions I'm not taking, right? As long as you're not taking them or making them, well, 
you're actually spending energy on them. So you want to close all the decision loops and only have a few open uh, and only have them open if you are not the one who can control the decision making process. Like next week, we oh no, not next week, the week after, uh, we plan to go sailing because we're buying a boat. Only we're not sure whether we can get the boat in time. So obviously, I can't make the choice. I'm going sailing in that week because I'm not sure I have a boat. Do you see what I mean? So the choice is not up to me. Right? I'm, I don't have everything in my power to be able to make that choice 100%. And I'll go into those if clauses. If I've got a boat, I'll be sailing in that week. So I'll be talking about that too. So it's a drain on your energy levels. The more uh, decision loops you've got going round where you're not making a firm decision, all that takes energy. Also, we tolerate situations or people that do not serve us because we're not able to make a clear decision. So I'll be talking about how to make clear decisions. This is what we'll cover. So I'll present a little bit facetiously, I think, a little bit, mm, a little bit jokingly, but in a simple way, and I think it's so telling. So I'll present to you a few decision-making processes, and I actually looked up how you put process into the plural. So it might be like something criteria or appendix or something like that, but it's actually processes. Also, uh, you'll be able to determine how you make your decisions, you'll be able to recognize how you make decisions, and once you recognize it, you can choose to do differently, you can choose to make your decisions differently. We'll look, in, we'll look into your reasons for making your decisions and taking responsibility for them, and then to, have, to love your reasons for having made just that decision. Because joy in life, life quality, is about feeling good about who you are and what you do. So if you can feel good about the decisions you make, well, then you get to feel good, right? So we need to love our reasons for making decisions. So coming back to that decision I had to make uh, about whether I wanted to testify or not, um, um, actually, I don't know whether that will harm me at some point, but if it does, if it does, I can say to myself, you did the right thing. I still feel good about doing it because I did it for the right reasons, for the reasons I feel good about. I'm all for the truth. So let me just use this opportunity for expressing my values and doing what is difficult, what might not immediately serve me, but what I can allow myself to feel so good about. So what might uh, not, what you might not appreciate now is I'm going to take an example that seems so obviously simple. Tea or coffee, how do you decide? Imagine you're in a, in a I don't want to say cafe if you associate it with coffee, but in, you're, in, you're in a place where you can have drinks, food, whatever. Imagine yourself in a place like that and ask yourself, would I have tea or coffee? Like some, some people can spin into a lot of doubt about this, but how we decide on whether we have tea or coffee is how we decide a lot of things, if not all things in life. So think about it. How you do one thing is how you do everything. If you rush through life, you've got the impression that you're always in a hurry, you'll always be in a hurry. And that will show up in all areas in your life. If you feel that you can't afford anything, well, that will show up in all areas of your life, right? So how you do one thing is how you do everything. I find that, um, that thought already very empowering. So what I want to talk about first is what I call a clear yes. I'm just going to hide all of us here. So a clear yes is, I love coffee. I'll have coffee. The coffee here looks extra delicious. I'm convinced that if I decide to have a coffee, it'll feel good, right? Because we always decide on something because of how we believe it will make us feel. So a clear yes is, yes, I'm all in. I want coffee. Or oh, the opposite. I'll have tea. I love tea. The tea here looks extra delicious. I'm convinced that if I decide to have tea, it'll feel good. Right? That's a clear 
Yes, it doesn't cost us any extra energy, right? So the thing about the brain is it uses up a lot of energy. It uses up a lot of calories. Calories is how we count energy in our body. So it uses up a lot of, of energy. So it wants to avoid making decisions because we have to think. So our brain likes to go into a default way of making decisions. And if it's tea or coffee, we can think, oh, it doesn't really matter. But then if we want to create awareness around how we make decisions, then it's useful to look at it. And I think it's always good to ask yourself, well, what do I really want here? A clear no is when you say, I don't want either tea or coffee because I don't feel like having either. So it's a clear no. There's no brain fog. There's no going back and forth. It's a clear no. So just be aware when you say yes to coffee, you are automatically saying no to tea. So that would be a yes, clear yes or a clear no in either case. I hope you're with me so far. I'm not annoying you with having a simple example. Let me know if that's the case. We'll get more complicated later, don't worry. So just notice for the moment, there's no right or wrong decision here, is there? Unless of course you go into, oh, coffee is bad for you or something like that. Oh, you should only be drinking green tea or any such judgmental uh, thoughts like that. Notice that there's no right or wrong because sometimes we really stop ourselves from making a decision because we think, there's one right decision and we might not be making it. Yeah, Elizabeth, I know you love coffee. <laughs> so how do you make decisions? Maybe you're somebody who says, oh, I don't know if I want to see your coffee. I need some more information. So you could be sitting there thinking, oh, I don't know whether I go on holiday to London or to Paris, I don't know, I need some more information. And that's okay, that's okay. If, like in my tea coffee example, you tell yourself, I'll have tea or coffee, insert whatever you want. If it's organically grown, if it's fair trade, if it's a particular brand, let me find out. Let me find out, let me get the information so that I can decide yes or no. That way, it will still be a clear yes or a clear no. So you are entitled to want more information. What doesn't work for us is, is when you're saying, do I want to go on holiday to Paris or do I want to go to London? And we stay there. Oh, I don't know. I just don't know. Will I like it more in Paris? Will I like it more in London? And we don't decide. I mean, there is no telling, is there, really? Of course, we can think, oh, I prefer to feel safe. I speak English, so I'm going to London. Or I really like the food in, in France, so maybe I want to go to France. We can come up with arguments. But as long as we don't decide, energy is still seeping into it. And I'm pausing a little bit for you to think of a situation in life where you are waiting for some more information. Now, where's that information going to come from? Can you go and get it or not? Right? If it's up to you to get the information, I suggest you go and get it. Right? Waiting will not bring clarity. Waiting will have you consume extra energy. But the energy you spend on thinking about whether you want to go on holiday in Paris or in London is energy you don't put towards something much more delicious. Like if you could, were able to decide, if you said, okay, I'm going to Paris now, then you could start planning. Now you could start getting excited, finding out what you want to do there, right? And that is so much more fun um, to start planning on that. And of course, you, you're allowed to change your mind. If you start planning a trip to Paris, um, and you find out that, well, actually, I um, can't go to Paris because I need uh, a visa and I won't be able to get the visa in time. Well, then, then you can take Paris off your decision making list, can't you? Right. You're allowed to change your mind. But what is really, really energy draining is not making a decision. So I always have 
Tea, I always have coffee. It's how you base your decision on a past habit and just go into your mind here and think about how many decisions in the day are you basing on past habit? So Elizabeth, I'm going to use you as an example because you said you love coffee. So it's all very nice to love coffee. Will you always have coffee or are you able to ask yourself sometimes, what if I had tea? I might just like it. And my point here is that you get out of that automatic response. Automatic response. I like to be really conscious of my habits so that I'm able to have either tea or coffee. Right? I don't want to be a slave to my habits. So I'm always uh, changing my habits, mixing them up. So there's no set rule for me. Okay, Elizabeth. Yeah. Fantastic. Also, you could be asking yourself, I'll have a tea or coffee if it's included in the menu, meaning I don't have to pay extra for it. Where in your life are you making that kind of choices? I'll have it if it's no extra effort, if nothing else is demanded of me. I'll have it if it's easy. I'll have it if, if it, somebody else pays for it. Right. I'll have it if it's easy for me could be difficult for other people, could demand something of other people, but I'll have it if it's no extra bother to myself, right? Also, you could be saying, I'll have tea if it's not expensive, or I'll have coffee if it's not expensive. So what is expensive, right? Are you saying, oh, I'm not having tea because I can't afford it? Where in your life are you saying that? Think about it, I was saying, oh, I can't go to Paris, which is my dream, because I can't afford it. So often when we say I can't afford it, like if you know me a little bit, you know that I want to live in a chateau. And right now, as I'm speaking to you, I don't have three or 10 million euros to buy one, right? But I would never say I can't afford it, because I can. Other people have bought chateaus, right? I just want to have more money in my bank account before I go out and buy one, right? And I'm doing everything I can to get that more money. Do you see what I mean? So I can't afford it. What does that mean? Does it mean you say, I can't afford it if you haven't got the money in your bank account to buy it? Well, maybe there's a different way, right? Maybe there's a a different way of getting what it is you want. Just think about, think about it. In any case, saying I can't afford it, I think is not a reason you love. So at the end of the, this workshop, you'll find out how to create a reason for not doing something other than I can't afford it. Create a reason that you can actually love, right? That feels so much better than giving your power over to money and saying, oh, it's not my fault I'm not buying a chateau. It's I can't afford it. It's money's fault, right? Um, I'll have a tea if there's time. Right? I'm not actually learning Italian. I so want to learn Italian, but I haven't got the time. I haven't got the time to play the piano. I said that for a while, and then I thought, well, actually, the time I spend cooking if I didn't need to cook, I could be playing the piano. So I found somebody who cooks for us. Isn't that fabulous? So that got rid of that excuse, right? So when we say, I haven't got time, you're going to learn how you can get a much more empowering reason to find out why you're not learning Italian. And of course, feel free to insert whatever you want instead of Italian, instead of Paris, instead of a chateau, right? Just feel free to play with it. We're playing with it, not so that you can see, oh, I'm doing it all wrong. Just play with it. Be willing to go there. Also, I'll have a tea or coffee later when something else happens that will allow it, force it, decide it. So I'll just wait to make my choice till the waiter comes and tells me, oh, we are out of coffee. Oh, great, I'll have tea then. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? 
but sometimes in life we do that we're just sitting here thinking oh um i don't know whether i will go on holiday uh i'll just sit here and wait till something happens that will decide it right? and i could talk for hours on this but i'll try to be brief so that we can get to some of the solutions right also, some people sit there and they say, I'll just let my husband decide. <laughs> and you can insert boss or partner or children or mother or colleague or whatever you want instead of husband. Are you waiting for somebody else to decide? Also, getting a little bit more absurd here, I'll sit around here for a while and see if any other choices are presented to me, believing that if I've got all the choices, then I'll be able to make a decision. Like if the waiter comes and says, do you want orange juice, grapefruit juice, water, sparkling water, still water, coffee, tea, herbal tea, green tea, if he presents you with a lot of choices, then you'll know what decision to make, right? We think that, and that is not true. It is actually not true. The more decisions we have to make, the more confused we get. And my idea is that you know right off the bat whether you want tea or not. Decide, do you want the tea or not? Do you want the coffee or not, right? Don't wait for a lot of other choices. So this happens when, for instance, we want to go out with somebody. We say, oh yeah, it's true, there's Mike, there's Albert. But I'll just sit here and wait. Perhaps somebody else comes along. Or I've got this job here and I really don't like it. But let me just sit here and wait. Maybe something will present itself. Maybe it will, do you know. But uh, you can actually go out there and look for it too. And that is how you empower yourself. Imagine the confidence you feel if you go out there, you find yourself a job. And then bam, that whole thing has just solved itself or itself, you've solved it, right? How does it get any better than that? Also, what you could be thinking is, I'm convinced there's something better or cheaper to be had. I'm not sure what it is. So you're staying in that confusion land where we love to stay thinking, oh, I don't know. I don't know, so I'm not making a decision. I just don't know. Do I want to do a PhD? Oh, I don't know. Maybe there's something easier out there. Maybe there's something better. Maybe I should be doing a different course. Maybe I should be doing another degree. Maybe I should do... <sighs> Exhausting, yeah? Exhausting. So also you could be saying, I'm frustrated that I have to decide. A cafe should just give me what I want instead of all this asking, right? Sometimes we get upset with life we get upset with circumstances for having too much choice. I, I don't see how we can have too much choice because we know, know what we want. Telling ourselves that I don't know what I want is just another excuse, right? Let's take responsibility and I will teach you how. So also, again, I haven't got all the information I need to make a decision. So let me just sit here and wait. The more we wait, the harder it will be to make the decision. Trust me, it really is. So how are you making your decisions? Do you make your decisions from and for your best self? And by best self, I mean the person you aspire to be. And of course you could already be that person. Like I'm pretty chuffed with myself. Like I've created my life, I'm very happy with it but I still want to live in a chateau, right? So um, if I want to make decisions, I have to look at myself at that, as that chateau owner or chateau dweller, right? I have to look at myself in my capacity of being the chatelaine and make my decisions from there, not make my decisions from the confused overweight, um, self-hating teenager that I used to be a long time ago, right? I was a teenager, but we can move that up and say, I used to teach in middle school and I really didn't like it. So do I want to be making decisions from that place? No, I don't. I want to have access to that place 
when I'm really being at my best, right? Those are the decisions that will serve me, right? Also, I talked a little bit about making decisions on default. Is that how, what you do? Is it, no, I'm a coffee person. I always have coffee. I just have coffee. So that means we are closing ourselves off to a lot of other possible choices because we are basing really, um, we're going into, let's just call it um, decisions on default because decisions based on lack or on the past are another thing that we just go into, which is the default decision making process based on lack. Yeah. Oh, I can't do a PhD because uh, I haven't got a degree. Right. Or I can't go on holiday to Paris because I've never been on holiday before and I haven't got the money. Right. Imagine if you if you project yourself into your best self, which might be a person who travels a lot which might be a person who enjoys life to the full. Now, would you be saying that if you were that person? Would that person be saying to herself, oh, let me not go on holiday because I can't afford it or I haven't traveled in the past? No, she wouldn't. Also, if you can persuade yourself to make your decision based on belief, on possibility. So that is a whole different workshop. I actually would be quite tempted to do a whole workshop shop on belief because we work a lot on this in my dream design course because um, we have to believe in our dreams, right? We haven't got the evidence for it, so we can't prove it. I can't prove that I'm a chateau owner or a chateau dweller or a chatelaine because I've got no chateau to show for it, but I can still allow myself to believe. And the good news is that I don't believe I don't have to believe 100% of the time. I can just believe some of the time. And that allows me to open up to possibility. So you can actually make your decisions from belief. You can decide to go on holiday in Paris from the belief that you'll enjoy it. Right? So if you demand certainty before deciding, you're never going to decide. There's no guarantee that you will enjoy your holiday in Paris. There's no guarantee, but you are there and you can decide to get out of it what you want, right? You're there to react to circumstances and that is where you've got the control. That's where you've got your responsibility. That's where you've got your power. But if you're sitting there thinking, I need to be certain before I can make a decision, right? You will be reliving your life over and over again, never anything new, because, well, if it's new, there's no certainty, is there? If you are doing something you've never done before, there's no certainty. So to make an empowered decision, we have to be willing to be uncertain. Also, Let's move into the solutions, because if we choose to be responsible for our decision and we choose no blame and no excuses, so we step out of saying, I blame money for not being able to do what I do. I blame time for not being able to do what I want to do. I blame my parents and my childhood. I blame the government. I blame the elections. I blame a lot of external things. Well, then we are victims. We really are victims of that. And that's very difficult to enjoy. So please don't beat yourself up if you are still in that sort of victim mentality, because we all are sometimes. We all sometimes feel self-pity, don't we? And we all sometimes think, oh, if only, if only, right? But when you go there, just know that you can choose differently. You can decide to step out of it. And maybe you're right. Maybe your parents weren't nice to you. Maybe the government did do something it shouldn't have done. Maybe your partner did, did something he shouldn't have done or whatever it is. That Be that as it may, your only possibility for taking back your power 
is in taking responsible for your part of it. And your part of it is your re reaction. Obviously, when we are children and our parents don't treat us well, we can't take responsibility for that, can we? Right? We are very disempowered when we are children. So that is not a place to be making decisions from. It's an unempowered place. So we don't want to ask a child, what decision would you make? Because now we are adults and we are no longer obliged to stay in that victim space. We can make our decisions from that responsible place, right? Where we are in charge. No, we don't control all the circumstances out there, do we? In fact, we control very few of them. But what we do control, we have to claim responsibility or we have to claim it for us to react to, to choose our reaction to, to choose what decisions we make around it. So allow yourself to decide if I don't go to Paris, it's because I don't desire it. I'm not choosing to blame money or time or my past. If I'm choosing not to make the decision to go ahead and book my flight, book my trip, it's because I don't desire it. Or it's because I don't believe deep down that Paris will bring me what I want. Somewhere I've got a doubt about whether Paris would really create for me what I want. So thirdly, you may be believing that other people will enjoy Paris, only you are unable to. Maybe you believe that in order to enjoy Paris, you need to be able to speak French or something like that. So just notice, instead of blaming or excusing with an external thing, go deep inside and ask yourself, is it because I don't really desire it? Is it because I don't believe that going to Paris will bring me what I desire? Or is it that um, other people might enjoy it, but I won't because I'm somehow at fault. I'm so, somehow unable. There's something in me that will prevent me from taking all the benefit out of it that I want to. Those are the real reasons behind our decisions. Right? And if we get back to my clear yes, my clear no, I don't desire the coffee, right? a clear no. I don't believe in the product. I don't believe it will actually make me feel good. A clear no. I won't be able to appreciate it because um, other people like coffee. I don't, I don't like anything that is, um, what's the English word is bitter, right? That's a real reason. It's not that you haven't got choice enough. It's not anything else. Those are the real reasons. And if you could allow yourself to find out which one it is for you, you'll be able to have a clear yes or a clear no. You see, if you are able to say, okay, I thought I dreamt of going to Paris, but actually I've just found out that I don't really desire going to Paris. Also, we self-protect sometimes. And I'll go back to my chateau example because I've got no guarantee that once I'm in my chateau that I will actually enjoy it. And that's a scary thought, isn't it? It's very scary. And subconsciously, we protect ourselves from finding out. Will I enjoy my chateau? Will I enjoy Paris? I don't know, but I'm afraid of finding out. So let me just stay here in indecision. Let me just stay here in decision par paralysis so that I won't find out. Okay, so this needs a lot of self-awareness, but it's really worth going there. It's really worth digging into everything around your desires, everything around your decisions so that you can get to a clear decision because once you've got a clear decision, you will find your reasons and you can have reasons that you love. I'm just going to have a sip of water. <coughs> so
Sorry about that. So when you love your reasons for your decisions, you'll feel so good about it. That is really what I want to do in life. I want to feel good. So if I've got some good reasons behind my decisions, then I feel good. <coughs> Once you get to the real reason why this decision or that decision, why yes, why no, you will no longer be blaming money, time, your husband or whatever for not being able to do it or be it or have it. So you've just taken out a whole lot of blame from your life. No resentment, no blame. <sighs> that feels so good, right? Of course, it feels good sometimes to blame somebody. And I'm the first person to try and blame my husband when something goes wrong, right? But that is such an unempowering place to be. And it doesn't feel good. When you're blaming somebody, it doesn't feel good. So I make sure to get myself right out of that whenever I go there, yeah? So it's not about not wanting to go there. It's about recognizing yourself when you're doing it, yeah? I don't think anybody on the planet never goes into blame. It's just part of our human makeup, right? So we might as well just recognize it and step out of it and claim our power back, the power where we are taking responsibility so that we get to decide. So you'll be able to take full responsibility for your decisions and love yourself for it. And as you know, if you know me a little bit, I'm all for satisfaction. I find that this satisfaction is a gold mine. You can always get to satisfaction, no matter whether you're starting from being angry, you can build yourself up to some sort of satisfaction. If you're feeling angry, you can go and smash a lot of plates. <sighs> that will already have you feel much better, right? You can always get yourself up to satisfaction. You can't always get yourself up to joy or elation. That is a lot harder. But we can always get to satisfaction. And that is the tipping point from which your life gets to be good, right? We spend our time in emotion. Some emotions, we call them negative and some we call them positive. So anger is traditionally on the negative side. So we don't want to spend too much time there because we want to be spending more time on the positive side where we're feeling the joy, the love, the elation, the satisfaction, right? The satisfaction is the place we want to so that we can go beyond satisfaction. So let me just sum up. You get to feel good about your decisions and you are able to make them easily and elegantly when you recognize and love your reasons for deciding. So with the holiday in Paris, if you decide to go, you can love yourself for deciding to go. You can get yourself geared up to love everything about it. If you decide not to go because you don't desire it, because you don't believe it will give you what you came for, or whether you, de you decided it was not what would make you happy. It might work for other people, but it won't work for you. It's not about Paris, it's about you. Then you can feel good about it. And you're no longer desiring something you're not having. You see what I mean? You have said no to it, it's a clear no. It's not, oh, I'll go to Paris when I've got a spare $3,000, right? It's not, oh, I'll go to Paris when I've got a friend to travel with. It's not all those decisions out there. It's a firm no. Now, if sometime you get a friend who says, oh, I want to go to Paris, bam, there you go. Oh, I wanted to go to Paris too. Now I've got somebody to travel with and I'm just doing it. You see what I mean? Make it be a firm, clear no. Allow yourself to have that good reason. Loving your reasons for deciding is really going to transform your life. And know that if you decide on one of the three solutions, I don't desire it, I don't believe in the product or the thing I'm desiring, it's not the right thing, or I don't believe in myself, in my capacity to enjoy it, it's one of those three things really, right? Get clear on it, find out. If it's a yes, 
then take your next action step, right? Start getting excited about it. Also, you get to feel empowered when you take full responsibility and stop blaming money, time, the government, your childhood, your husband, your neighborhood, your neighbors, um, your lack of education, your too much education, whatever it is, right? When you stop blaming, stop blaming and take responsibility, it will feel so good. Especially if you can take responsibility and not judge yourself, not start saying, oh, this went wrong. Let me just, let me just hate myself to something better, right? It doesn't work like that. Let me just see what went wrong. Let me analyze, let me become aware. And let me just love myself to a better decision next time. You can change your life by becoming aware of how you make decisions or you don't make decisions. If you become aware of how you make decisions and you want to change that way, it will feel uncomfortable and that's okay. <laughs> Imagine if you were able to look at one of these examples and recognize, oh, this is how I make decisions and it's not serving me. Maybe I can change it. I'm not saying, well, I'm saying maybe you can change it, but you can definitely change it. But it requires you to become uncomfortable. And that is when I like to say anything worth having that you haven't got now is on the other side of comfortable. Right? Because you won't have done it before. It's going to feel uncomfortable, even if it's nice. Like today I went for a massage and there was a time in my time in my life where I didn't have massages. So going from no massages to a massage, ah, first time I thought, um, will I like it? Will I enjoy it? Well, I love it. So I'm having them, but are those a moment of feeling uncomfortable, right? So I would say even your happiness is right on the other side of comfortable. When you don't make decisions, they're made for you. Not making a decision is still making a decision. So sitting there thinking, I don't have enough information to make the choice. Something will come along and allow me to make the choice. Um, <clears throat> whatever it is for you, just know that it feels disempowering and it leads to a sense of helplessness and you cannot take action from helplessness. Helplessness is having no power, right? You will never take action from there. And when you do take action, it's going to be a reaction. Right? It's not going to be something that you've decided on. It's just going to be a spontaneous default reaction. It will drain your energy. Right? Think of all these people who've got burnout. Think of all those people who are stressed out. What decisions are they avoiding taking? What are they putting off? There's so much power in decisions. Decision paralysis may lead to massive regret. I'm pausing again here because I feel that to be so true. I really feel that if we don't make the decisions about how we want to live, we're going to regret it. We really are. Think about weight loss. If you don't decide to lose weight, you keep eating unhealthily and you end up with diabetes, type 2 diabetes, well, you'll be regretting something, won't you? That's about feeling into that higher self and making your decision from that point. Right now, I eat unhealthily. Let me work myself up to thinking, feeling, and being like the person who has lost weight, that healthy person. What choice would she be making now? What decision would she be making? Right? won't lead to regret that will be in service of you the decisions we make from lack from feeling unworthy from feeling um, that we need to reproduce our past those are not uh, decisions that serve us we need to move up to the space where we have passed all that and make our decisions from there. And that will feel uncomfortable and that is okay. It's okay to feel uncomfortable. It's just a feeling, right? Feelings come and go. 
you can feel uncomfortable and allow that to exist. Oh gosh, I'm feeling so uncomfortable. <sighs> wow, such uncomfort. And then just be with it till it goes away. You won't be able to feel uncomfortable for long, right? It's okay to feel uncomfortable. It really is. So I hope you have learned that there are no right decisions. And I like to say, there's only the decisions you make right by loving your reasons for making them. Right. I'm pausing here because I find that to be true. So if we take it back to the tea or coffee, tea is not right, coffee is not right, there is no right solution. It's you getting behind your oh, right solution, right decision, sorry. It's you getting behind your decision, owning it fully, taking full responsibility for it and loving why you're doing it. Right? I hope that inspires you. So I'm here to help. Go ahead and book a session if you want. So in this session, I'm not going to coach you, but we are going to get clear. We are going to get extremely clear on, um, sorry, I'm doing two things at a time. We are going to get clear on, let me just post the link to where you can book a session. So I put it in the chat, the link to my calendar. So during this session, we're going to find out what you think is not working for you. And very possibly it's not what is not working for you. And being a life coach, talking with you, I will be able to direct you to what is really lying underneath, what you might not be seeing, what you possibly might not be seeing. I mean, very possibly might not be seeing because it's very difficult to have all the awareness from the inside. Like I'm a life coach. I still have a life coach. I actually have two coaches, you know, so it's so useful to get the perspective from somebody else. So that's what we'll be doing in this session. I'll be giving you my perspective. Then it'll be up to you to decide whether you need help or whether you don't need help, right? A clear yes, a clear no. If I can help you, I will suggest this to you and you can move forward and start coaching with me. If I feel I can't help you, then I'll tell you to, and this will be a clear no, if you see what I mean. So feel free to book a session. I tried to free up some space next week, but I haven't got a lot of, of, of spaces. So please go ahead and book one as soon as possible. Um, and then I'll free up some more later on. But as I don't know whether I'm going sailing or not, I'm hesitating a little bit, which is okay. There's still some slots for next week. So um, please come to the session just with an open mind. After the session, you don't owe me anything. It's, um, it's my gift to you. I will learn a lot. I will learn something about you and I will learn something about me. I will learn something about coaching. I will learn something about decision-making. I will learn a lot of things. So please don't feel that you need to be indebted to me right? It's just a session like that I'm offering to you. If you're here live, feel free to take advantage of it straight away. And if you're watching the replay, uh, I'll be sending out the link uh, via the email. I'll include the link in the email so that you can go ahead and book, book a session should you so wish. So let me just stop the recording and maybe... Maybe somebody wants some coaching here on their decisions, which is always lovely. Hello, thank you, Katrina, for such a useful webinar. It's such a great way to think about loving the reasons. Okay, thank you. Lovely, I, I, I love that you liked it. So I'm going to stop the recording. Say goodbye to you on the replay. Thank you for listening in. I hope to connect you with you some other time, either in person or via another workshop. Take care. See you soon. Bye for now.